Well, welcome to the garage. Um, I'm stuck indoors today. Uh, that's because we're in the middle of a pandemic and uh, we're in isolation. We're not allowed outside. Uh, so it's an ideal opportunity to get on and fix the uh, motorbike. This is the BMW K1100, quite an old bike. Uh, it back, goes back to 1997. The problem I have is that uh, when I serviced the bike, I changed the front disc pads and then discovered I got a fairly big problem with the discs themselves and they need replacing. So let me explain what the problem is. So these discs are designed to actually float between the two pads which are um, fixed on the bike. It's not like a, a car where the whole um, disc caliper floats and centers itself. In, on a motorbike, it, it's the disc that actually does the floating. And the way they do that is that the disc is mounted on these, these bobbins. There should be absolutely no play uh, on, these, on these bobbins as well. And if you have a look at my disc, it's rattling like crazy. There's a huge amount of play in there. That in itself may not be a problem in terms of safety, but it is really annoying when it rattles and at slow speeds, it tends to make the, the front brake snatch a little bit. Um, what is the problem, though, is that when I was doing the service, I measured the thickness of the disc. And um, these discs, when they're brand new, are five millimeters thick. Uh, the minimum that you can have for safety is four and a half millimeters. I measured my discs, and they're between 3.6 and 3.8 millimeters. There's another video that I did showing how I measured the discs um, just using a, a, a metric bolt, which uh, you may like to have a look at. So basically, I've got worn out discs, worn out bobbins, and to use the technical term, the discs are knackered and need replacing. So to get the rear mud guard off, it's fairly straightforward. All you need to do is loosen off this uh, nut bolt. You only need to loosen it. It's uh, it, the, um, the mud guard actually just slides back out. And there's an Allen key at the back here, just in there uh, that you take out as well. The next step is to remove the disc calipers uh, on both sides. So they undo these two uh, bolts here. And now the whole caliper just slides straight off. Um, I'm going to try and hook this out of the way. Uh, and probably the way to do that, just using a bungee cord really. Okay, so before you take the front wheel out, you need to put a lot of weight into the back because normally the front wheel sits on the ground like this and by putting some weight on, you get a bit of space underneath. Um, if you don't do that, the whole bike's gonna fall forward potentially when you take the wheel out, but I always put weight in the back, make sure it stays up. So let's look at how we get the, uh, the wheel off. So the front wheel is held on by a shaft, this, this shaft that goes all the way through. Um, there are clamping bolts on each of the end of the forks. There's two here and two on this side. And then there's another Allen key uh, bolt right at the end of the shaft. So all you've got to do is loosen off the uh, gripping bolts, undo that, and the whole shaft this shaft should then pull out. There she goes. So that's the shaft undone. And in theory, it should just come out. Which it will do, it's a little bit tight. Unfortunately, I knelt on my microphone and lost sound at this stage, um, but with a gentle bit of persuasion, the shaft came out. Um, watch out for the spacers on, on either side of the wheel as well as you take it out. So the ABS ring is held on by these um, very small Allen screws. There's actually six of them. 
and the actual disc itself are held on by these larger Allen screws and another six of those as well. These small um, Allen screws are thread locked in by BMW and are an absolute bitch to uh, get off. So I started off by using um, a heat gun to uh, try and melt the thread lock on, on these uh, little screws. So they're so pony you've got to be really really careful with it. Try to give it a turn and it just would not move. So I had to stop at that point. So the large screws uh, don't have any um, thread lock on them at all. Um, so you could just use a, a socket and an Allen key and off it, off they come very, very easily. Once all six are out, you can just remove the disc. Like that. So at this point I had decided that uh, I was going to have to drill out the heads of the ABS ring. So I flipped over the wheel and I took the uh, second disc off instead. So at this point I left the uh, ABS ring screws soaking in penetrating oil when I rough fitted the new disc to the opposite side. Just nipping up the, uh, the screws. These are brand new screws and brand new washers. So these are the torque settings I'm aiming to use. Uh, for the brake disc, we're going to use 24 newton meters or 18 foot pounds. So when you're talking down the, the wheel, you really want to work on opposite screws so it goes down evenly and you don't get any distortion. So the disc has now been soaking in WD-40 for quite a while, about at least an hour now. Um, so I'm going to give it another go, um, heating up. Let's go. Does not want to move. If I can't get this done, I'm going to have to drill out the screws. So this is the last one. And hopefully then we get this ring off. I've got the ABS ring off and all I would say is when you're drilling, uh, take it slowly, be careful and drill straight and uh, you'll get those heads off and you'll be able to get the ABS ring off. So now uh, I've fitted the disc already to the, uh, the wheel and now it's time to fit the ABS ring and um, it's just going to go on like this. What I'm uh, using is uh, one centimetre long M5 marine grade stainless steel screws and I'm going to use some thread lock with it. Okay so I don't have a, um, a torque wrench that goes down to four newton meters is what you need for this so I'm just going to do it by feel and just tighten up like that and going again on opposites Like that. I'm now up to the stage where I need to put the wheel back in. Uh, before I do that though, I want to just check the wheel bearings. And the way to do that is uh, put your fingers in, rotate the bearings, and you're trying to feel for any roughness uh, at all as you rotate them. These are perfectly fine, which is great. Um, the wheel bearings have a kind of seal over the top of them to stop water and, and muck getting into them. However, the spacers that we turned out, uh, took out earlier, uh, they get packed full of grease and that acts as a, a secondary barrier as well. So I've cleaned these out, I've repacked them full of grease and they're ready to go uh, back in as well. You remember at the beginning of this video I said when I was taking out this shaft that it was tight and it was tight and um, I've had trouble actually putting the wheel back on and so I've looked a bit closer and I discovered that the left and right forks are misaligned to each other, which um, slightly rotated. So as I was introducing the shaft through, 
um, it did not align with the left hand fork hole. So what I've had to do is I've taken this cover off the top here, taken the front mud guard off, and there's this bridging bracket between the two forks. If you loosen off these four bolts, that will give you a very slight amount of rotation. And uh, so what I've done is I've put the shaft through the forks to align them. And now I'm just going to tighten up these four bolts and that should be the forks all nicely aligned. And then we can put the wheel back in. Put a little bit of grease on the, uh, on the shaft. Wearing gloves this time. And then I'm gonna, I've used a couple of blocks of wood here just to uh, help support the wheel just for a moment while I get this in. Look at that, it goes in beautifully there. And now we've got to just wiggle it in to the other side. There we are. That's nice. Okay, that's the shaft back in. So once you've got the shaft in, what you want to do is to torque down the end bolt to uh, 33 newton meters or 24 foot pound. You then want to uh, do up these two clamps and pump the um, forks just to make sure everything is aligned before you do up the clamps on this side. Now the clamping torques are 14 newton meters or 10 foot pounds. So next is to uh, fit the, uh, the calipers back on. You may have to take a screwdriver and just push back the pads a little bit for the new size of uh, disc that you've got on. Offer it up and don't forget to put this plate back on. There's one side. And that's the other side. And this time we're going to uh, use a torque setting of uh, 40 newton meters or 29 and a half or 30 foot pounds. There we go, that's one side done. Now do the other side. So the final check is to check the gap of the ABS sensor to the ABS ring. And uh, that should be between 24 and 26 thousandths of an inch. So I'm just gonna use a feeler gauge and let's see if I can, yep, I can just get it in there. And it's a nice snug fit. So I'm quite happy with that. I think the ABS sensor is uh, set perfectly. So I'm now gonna reassemble the mud guards and I'm finished. So there we are, the job's done. It was a bit tricky in places. Uh, the final thing I've done is use some disc cleaner just to wipe the disc down, just in case I've got any greasy fingerprints uh, on it, uh, on them, I should say. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what I do, please subscribe and um, catch you next time. Bye for now.